Stewart, St. Helens are the women's Super League champions. The most amazing game for the Leeds Riders. Warrington dominating. <laughs> Great try for the Rollins. Huddersfield Giants take the points home. He missed it. It's a full ass. Well, good evening. You're very welcome to the last tackle here on The Sportsman. Delighted to be joined this week by St Helens and Great Britain legend Paul Sculthorpe and a man who the last time he was in the studio played for St Helens, that was only a couple of weeks ago, yeah. but Kyle Amore, you're gearing up to make your Warrington debut this week. How's it been? Yeah, no, look, it's been really good. Uh, you know, I've been in with the lads now for just over a week and, uh, you know, everyone's been great. And it's just, uh, you know, the opportunity to play, you know, uh, regular rugby again is just something that really excited me. And, uh, you know, obviously when a big club like Warrington comes along who, who wants you to come along and play, you know, it's too hard to turn down. So uh, now I'm super excited for hopefully get my debut on Friday. What was it like being the new boy again when he turned up to training first day of school? Yeah, it was mad, Lewis, you know, because... You've been so used to uh, doing the same things day in, day out and the same sort of routines and structures that they have there at Saints that, that, that go into a new club, a new environment. Although you, you've you played against a lot of the players, you don't really know them personally. So, you know, to build those relationships and get them going again, you're, you're right, it was like a big uh, it was like a big kid ready for first day back at school. So, but no, like I said, they've all been really, really good and uh, I'm just looking forward to, to getting going now. And he can get his membership now, Scully, to the uh, former Saints Players Club. Yes, yes. No, I think it's I think it's exciting for Kyle. You know, it's you say it's a it's a bit of a fresh start and, and get back into to playing. You know, the week in week out, which which you want to do as a as a player. And I think a big coup for for Warrington. You know, he's got a, he's got a lot of experience, a, a lot of success behind him as well. And and they're looking to take that over to, to Warrington and, and you know give him some of that culture that he's had at Saints. Well, there's only really one place for us to start this week. We hoped we were going to get a classic Betfred Challenge Cup final at the weekend. It was a two-point game with four minutes to go, and then this happened. They've got the potential of Golden for extra time. Luluai, Bateman. Now it's with Field. Hard to flutter when he has the ball, but it's spun back to the middle. And Smith now, and Harry Smith with a glove oh, kick. Go. Liam Marshall, Liam Marshall, and at the corner. Just have won it! Wow! Wigan fans are bouncing up and down! Wigan's players are bouncing up and down! Because with three minutes left to play, that might just be a decisive moment. Yeah, Scully, what a game we had in the end. A, a cup final that lived up to all the billing. Yeah, I think that's what you want to see in a cup final, isn't it? You know, a game that goes right to the wire and, and a close game all the way through. And it, and it was, you know, Huddersfield must be must be absolutely hard, bro. You know, the, the better team, you know, in big parts of, uh, of that game and, and to be, to be you know, leading with uh, with only three minutes left. And, and probably what cost them as well was was probably some, some of the over efforts, mm. you know, instead of keeping a bit more composure on that on that last play. and. But you know we spoke about Wigan, didn't we? You know in the in the previous week, and, and I put it in my, my Betfred column this, this week that they've got a lot of big game experience, you know, and, and they're a very very resilient side, is what you expect from Wigan, and, and they just kept playing. Hey, Kyle, it was a, a, an incredible final, and what a backdrop as well. That is a fairly impressive stadium, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's terrific. You know, I think it's uh, it screams that more rugby league should be sh should be down at there. But going back to the game itself, you know, I agree every, everything that Scully said there. You know, it was a classic game, but I just thought Wigan. You know, they just showed the real grit that they always can do, don't they? And you know, the amount of defending that they had to do, and they probably had to do way too much of it in that first half. But to just keep turning them away, you know, I think ultimately th those little efforts uh, when. when you go back and watch the video there'll be a lot of stuff in there for Matty Pete that he'll want out of the lads for sure but you know take nothing away for their ability to absorb all that pressure and, and deal with it more often than not and then to have that skill from from Harry Smith that that, that kick was sensational wasn't it and, and at that moment and at that pressure in part of the game to nail that was was brilliant so you know I think the, the, the class of Wigan shone through in the end. It was the composure that I was impressed by from minute one really from Wigan because they did a lot of defending especially in yeah. that first 20 minutes 
since Huddersfield started really strong and yet they limited them as much as they could. Yeah, well, look, it took them about 20 minutes before I think Huddersfield give away a penalty and then off the back of that, they do a really good defensive set and then they force them into a goal line dropout which leads to that, you know, that Harry Smith first try. But like I say, it took them 20 minutes to get to that point and it was largely through a lot of unforced errors, you know, just things like picking the ball up from dummy half and, and just, just very unlike Wigan. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there that, that going forward, Matty Pete will want out of the game for sure. But I think that when you come down to those big games, it's about, you know, big efforts and particularly in defence that, that wins you it. Scully, two defining things for me out of that game. Tommy Luluai making the squad for Wigan, I thought was huge. And then Chris Hill going down with a, what looks like a, a, pretty hor a pretty nasty injury for him. I... If either of those two things don't happen, it could have been a very different result. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tommy's Tommy's key, isn't he? You know, um, to, for him just to, to get out there, whether he's hundred percent or fifty percent, I think just having his influence on, on other players around him. But you know, certainly on, on defence, we all know what Tommy Tommy Lewis brings on on D. Uh, and again, we know Hilly. He's been he's been a massive signing for for Huddersfield this year, and he's an ultimate professional, is Hilly. And and you know what he brings to to Huddersfield, not just with his performance, but you know, just, just being around the, the players on the field as well. Uh, and that was a massive loss for them. Just on that, Lewis, yeah, you talk about the big players of like Luluai and Hilly. When you have them involved, it makes, you know, it can make normal or, or the ordinary players in, in there, if you like, rise another level. And I think, you know, having Luluai on the bench, knowing that when the game gets tough, you've got a guy of his quality to bring on. But on the other side, when they lost Hilly, well, that was a big void that they had to fill. And, you know, I thought Huddersfield forwards, you know, young Wilson and, and, and people like that, at the very best that they tried, they just sort of ran out of it towards the back end of the game, didn't they? It's important to remember, I guess, as well, Huddersfield very much still at the beginning of their process, brought yeah. in Watson in last year. It clear the progress that they are making this season. You can only feel that the best is yet to come. Uh, I do just want to talk about Spurs a little bit more, Carl. Bumped into you on the train on the yeah. way out of the ground, and someone said to us his only complaint was that there weren't enough hand dryers in the toilets. Well, I think when you get into that point, you're <laughs> scraping the barrel for things to moan about, aren't well, you? Well, that's just classic rugby league fans, isn't it? There's always something for them to moan about. But yeah, I, I thought it was brilliant. You know, so much going on round there, and you know, just that that end that the Wigan and Lee fans when it was like the dome and wall of uh, you know in football, and it was brilliant. And it would just be uh, you know it'd be terrific to see more uh, more games down there. It'd be great great to see an international down there as well uh, in later years to come so you know it's uh, a real tick in the box all around I think yeah I saw at the end of that that clip Liam Marshall uh, the emotion and the delight on his face when he scored that try he hadn't come down off that ceiling when I spoke to him just a couple of minutes after the game this is the man of the moment Liam Marshall Liam what a moment uh, you left it to the last minute but to get over for that winning try must have been incredible yeah the, the further it went on to that last 10-15 minutes I, I didn't think we was going to get it but it's a credit to this playing group, we never give up and all the game didn't go anywhere what we planned it to, but that's the things you've got to overcome and credit to Huddersfield for putting us through the, through the mire there, but yeah, we got over in the end and I'm busy. It didn't seem to be any kind of panic, you kept it kind of on a level and it obviously got over at the end. Yeah, it's obviously tough to, um, to try and keep that level ahead and keep composed um, when, you, when you're behind and the clock's ticking down, but look, the character we showed there has been built uh, through the start of pre-season into now and we're absolutely buzzing and for silverware, uh, for me personally on the field for Wigan's outstanding and I'm buzzing. What was the feeling like because you did it in front of your home fans, that wall of noise when you scored? Uh, it's the stuff of dreams that, yeah, I've been here as a kid and watched finals and I, I couldn't have dreamt it up last night when I went to bed so that was incredible and yeah, probably a moment I'll never forget. Yeah, Liam Marshall wrote his name into Wigan folklore at the weekend with that try. A real special weekend for, for everyone involved down at Tottenham. It was incredible. There's still so much to come this season. That's one of the most exciting things about it. I think as well, one of the things about having a cup final in May, we're only halfway through. There's still loads on the menu. And this weekend, delighted to now confirm, we will be bringing you right here on the Sportsman Rugby League, live and exclusive for the Betfred winning Super League, York City Knights against Leeds Rhinos. Kyle, you're on our commentary team for this one. It should be a cracker, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. You know, Leeds obviously got a great win last week against Huddersfield and, and York, who can forget that, you know, they, they, they ended up doing Saints for the first time in 2019 that those girls have been beaten at Saints. So, you know, both teams started terrifically and uh, a lot of people would have, you know, these two teams uh, in that top three come the end of the year. So it's a real, uh, it's a real benchmark for both to, to put their stall out ready for the rest of the season to come.
Uh, Scully, you've been coming on this show for, for quite a long time. We've been working with you for a while, and over that time, we, we, we've kind of kept speaking about just seeing the women's game grow and grow and grow. And that York win against Ellen, mm. St. Helens a couple of weeks ago, probably the biggest signifier of that. Mm. And we've got another genuine, really good game in our hands here. Yeah, and you want to see that. You know, we, we spoke about the, the men's Challenge Cup final. You want to see close games, and, and, and that's something we want to see within the women's game more competition. You know, Saints have been quite dominant along with Leeds making you know, the, the, the major finals for, for a number of years. But to see now York, you know, City Knights, women's team, not only compete, but to, to, to topple Saints. And that's a, a massive shot in the arm for them and, and obviously their, their confidence going forward. Yeah, well, York did beat Saints, of course, a couple of weeks ago. A few weeks before that, Leeds pushed them all the way in that Challenge Cup final. Let's hear from Kira Bennett from the Leeds Rhinos ahead of this game. So Kira, what are your targets for the rest of this season? I just want to go out there with my teammates, have fun, and um, I want to win. <laughs> I do want to win this year. We're looking towards the league leaders now in the grand final, um, after obviously missing out on the Challenge Cup. But I'm excited to go out there each week and, and push on and, and learn more about ourselves and put in some grit and determination. So there's a big hype around this season, especially with regards to women. How do you think the season's going to pan out with regards to support and getting the fans behind? Um, it's definitely a big year for Women's Super League, um, especially with the World Cup at the end of the year. There's a lot more media coverage even today here. Um, we wouldn't have had this a couple of years back. And the stadiums we're playing on now, it's, it's exceptional and only like what you dream of. So come the end of the year, it's going to be really good. So hopefully the fans do get behind us and bring in big crowds and followers on social media, which is going to be good. Yeah, so that's this weekend, the York City Knights against the Leeds Rhinos in the Betfred Women's Super League right here on the Sportsman. Coverage starts at 11.45, it's a midday kickoff, and then the week after that, the action keeps coming here on the Sportsman because we've got an international test match for you, Wales women against England women as we build up to the World Cup, massive really for England to be getting game time as they build into the Women's World Cup at the end of this season. So make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button here on YouTube to make sure that you keep up to date and don't miss a thing from the new home of Rugby League Online. You're watching Sportsman Rugby League. Subscribe for exclusive content. So let's turn our attention now to the Betfred Super League and it's an interesting juncture in the season, Scully, especially with Wigan winning that trophy at the weekend. It just feels like it's blowing the back half of this season right open. Yeah, now the Challenge Cup's out of the, out of the way, isn't it? All, uh, all focus is on, is on Super League and you know, some big games and some big games this weekend as well, no, no less than the, uh, the first one, Warrington and, uh, and Leeds. Yeah, we'll come on to that, but Carl, I was just mentioning Warrington and some of those clubs that are kind of in and around them. I was looking at the league table earlier and it is really compact down there. Yeah. You, the talk must be amongst the Warrington camp that two or three wins and you're right back in that playoff chat and it, it, that you really aren't far away from the teams three or four places above you. That's exactly how it is, Lewis. You know, and I've not, I we're under no illusion either that Leeds Rhinos will be saying exactly the same thing. You know, usually by the point where Easter's out the way, you know, your runners and riders are starting to take position really of where they're going to sort of finish by the end of the year. But you know, as with all Challenge Cup finals, you know, one of, one of those will have a three, uh, a bit of a free fall afterwards. You know, history tells you that, and uh, you're dead right. You know, there's only sort of two wins, and you're straight back in it, and that's the mindset. We can't really be thinking any further than. Then Friday, I know it's a, an old cliche that you can't think past your next game, but in our, in our case, it's so, so true. You know, we've literally just got to address each week and, and just try and make sure we put our best foot forward. And if we do that, look, there's no doubt in that Warrington side that there's a lot, a lot of talent there and it shouldn't be where it is at the moment. But it's up to us as a playing group to flip that on its head and, and we'll start on Friday night. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting second half of the season. We've crowned our Challenge Cup winners, of course, and now... All roads lead to Old Trafford. So this is it. The stage is set. 
A season's work goes on the line. It's time to decide the champions of Super League. Robinson! Robinson! What a try! Billy Wears with a try! Paul the step inside Aitchison. Gets away from Nickel. Henry Paul without a boot. He's got Nickel in pursuit. Nickel gets to him. But Henry Paul stands over. This is the moment for long. He's kicked it. Leon Price on the break for Saints. still to come this season there's so much to play for and Kyle we spoke about you making your debut this weekend for Warrington against yeah. Leeds uh, that, that's a tough game because two teams desperately scrapping it out for a very valuable two points <laughs> look they're all going to be tough games from now on in for us that's the reality of the situation that, that we found ourselves in so you know I'm, I'm, for, for me personally just looking forward to running out at Aliwal Jones and uh, you know as a player in Warrington colours for, for, for the first time so uh, look we, we've all got a we've all had a discussion around what we want this second half of the year to look like and uh, again without being without being boring it does start one game at a time for us so you know uh, who better than Leeds you know both teams desperate for a win so that's the kind of game we want and uh, you know we'll, we'll be ready for it for sure and then uh, well Catalans versus Huddersfield Scully I, I winced a little bit when I saw this as the next game mm. up for Huddersfield because uh, picking themselves up after that defeat against Wigan was always going to be difficult and then they're pro probably the hardest away day of the season yeah, on top of that yeah, it's quite a mentally draining week is the, is the Challenge Cup and it can, it can work both ways you, you, yeah, when yeah. you win it can be it can be very mm. draining can't yeah, it yeah, for sure. up the, the week after but obviously in defeat as well it's either one, one or the other you know the boys probably can't wait to get back out there and, and put right what, what went wrong at a weekend um, but it doesn't get any any more difficult does it than, than going down to the south of France to play you know a quality team like Catalan I just think the manner of how they lost that cup final, you know, usually when you get beat in a, in a Challenge Cup final, you get straight back at it, don't you? And you're the one that normally wins. It's normally the, the winners of the cup that sort of have the hangover. But, you know, I predict it's going to be Huddersfield that's going to have that hangover. You know, added into the fact they've lost uh, Chris Hill, haven't they? Uh, Luke Yates, who's picked up a suspension. Uh, Ollie Russell, he's not been named either. Uh, you know, it, it becomes increasingly difficult, I think. And uh, I just think that, that, that I watched the players and they're all in a heap on the floor. And I think the amount of effort and the amount of belief really that they would have had you know because I for one thought that, that, that they'd done enough to win that final to have it snatched away from them like that, that, that that's going to take a real real uh, a lot amount of mental resolve to, to get back on the horse for that one I think It's the only kind of comfort I guess for Huddersfield and this isn't what I imagine Ian Watson is saying this mm. week is that okay you've lost that game in, in pretty devastating fashion but they're still fourth in the table coming into that final they were still putting in some decent performances there's still plenty to play for playoffs very much on the cards and really it's an open end as to what they can achieve this season still yeah look I, I've no doubt that they'll be there come the end of the year right I just think that, that this next couple of weeks is going to be a very very difficult period for them to recover largely because one of how they got beat but two the personnel that they're going to they're going to lose over the next couple of weeks I just think it's uh, I just think it's going to be a, going to be a huge hill for them to climb there's, there's no doubt on that that Watt will be, be talking all the positives from the yeah. weekend you know, and, and everything that they can build on for the for the rest of the year because, you know, they were probably one play. Huddersfield made that, that kick from Harry Smith 
you know, Huddersfield have won the Challenge Cup and it's a, it's a completely different story. So, you know, they were well in that game uh, and, and well able to, to win it. So they'll be talking the positives, no, no doubt. But like Kyle says, you know, it's the, it's the, the, the physical side of it, of, of the players that are missing and also the, you know, the disappointment of, of, of not finishing the job. Uh, we talk about Huddersfield needing to recover. Very different kind of recovery, I'd imagine, for Wigan Warriors before their Catterford game. There might be a, a few Balocas <laughs> going around with changing room before, I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure they've had a they've had a good week. You know, some of the footage of uh, of the homecoming as well. Um, look like they, they had a, a certainly a good trip home. Yeah, it can be it can be, be draining. I'm sure Wigan have had a pretty easy week this week in regards to, to training and, and how that you know pans out in the in the, in the game. Um, but I think the talk of Wigan will be, we've won the Challenge Cup, but we can be a damn lot better than, than we played. Uh, and I think there's a lot of improvement in that, in that Wigan performance. What, like Carl said it before, what Mike Peterler spoke about, and, and probably straight after the game, was just the resilience and, and the effort-based stuff of, of Wigan. Yeah, interesting times for Castle for Carl, because they were on a quite a good trajectory, putting in some good performances. Disappointed loss against Salford, and then Jack Mano has gone back to Australia on compassionate yeah. leave. Um, so, uh, almost quite a delicate 50-50 time of the season for them in some respects. Yeah, well, it's interesting with Cass because when they played against Salford, uh, that was when Jake Mamo got hooked about halfway through the first half, I think it was, and then he never returned. So, you know, obviously there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. But I think uh, Castleford's position in the table, I actually said it when I when I'd done the game with Sky, that I felt that they were in a false sense of security because they'd had some some of the teams they played, you know, when they went on that four or five game winning run, they played ourselves, which was a load of kids. They played a busted OKR side and a busted lead side. So yes, while they have to do the job and get the wins, it didn't really reflect what they'd had to face, you know. And then when they faced against Salford, you know, they, they obviously got they got done by quite a quite a decent scoreline, didn't they? So I think for this weekend, it all depends on what kind of squad Wigan put out. You know, will they rest and rotate, Scully? I don't know. You know, when, off the back of a final, um, talk about that mental deload. Well, that's one way of doing it. Or will they get straight back after it, having lost two games before the cup final? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. What What would you prefer if you were a player in that situation, Scully? Would you say, right, I've won a cup final, give me the week off, or would you be going? No, let's keep the wheels turning, keep our nose to the grind and keep at it. 100% me personally, I'd want to be playing. I'd, I'd, I'd want to be playing absolutely no doubt. And part of, part of the thing of, of this week is, is getting back out there in front of the fans as well, being a Challenge Cup winner. Yep. Um, players want to get out there and, and play. It's what we do, it's, it's what we get paid for, it's what we enjoy and why we play the game. Uh, and no doubt, you know, Wigan, Wigan players will want to be out in front of their fans again, you know, on the back of last week's success and try and back it up. You know, the last thing you'd want is, is a poor performance and a defeat. I just think as well, Wigan can't really afford one, can they? You know, they got beat against Hull and they got beat against Huddersfield going into the final. Uh, you know, while they can enjoy and celebrate the success, but, you know, we're now talking about the rest of the season and, and for Wigan, three losses in a row in the league wouldn't be ideal for that. Wigan have had a, they've had a quite a rotation of, of players anyway, so there yeah. is a lot of players who didn't play in that final on, on weekend who, who were still classed as, as part of your, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. your first choice squad. So there's no doubt there'll be, there'll be rotation and there'll be injuries, it was a physical game, um, but they'll be all focused, so we'll be going out and performing and winning. Uh, to, lose, to lose against St Helens, Carl, how desperate will your, your old teammates be to make sure that Lightning doesn't strike twice this Well, season? I think that'll be the chat amongst them all, for sure. You know, I think they can't go to South of France. We, we, they got it wrong last time, really. You know, we, we, I was part of the team that day, and uh, you know, I, I don't think you ever sort of change attitudinally-wise. I just think that you know things happened that day that, that were very unlike a Saints performance, and whether that was mentally the back of our mind, we thought we had a good enough side to go there, and we kind of disrespected them in that sense but I'm pretty much certain knowing what Christian Wolf's like he ain't going to leave a stone unturned this week and I imagine the intensity that he's gone about this week's session will be probably bigger than what he has done yeah. through previous weeks but to lose Scully obviously got that win against Wakefield a few weeks ago so close to turning Huddersfield over in the build up to the final they will have their tails up and they'll see that it's just a two point gap now between them and the rest and if they can pick those two points off before they play Wakefield a magic weekend and this season's very very risky for all of those teams at the yeah, bottom yeah, no it is it's so close isn't it and you know for those who thought Toulouse would be a shoe in for a for relegation at the end of the year you know couldn't be any any further from the truth they've shown glimpses all you know throughout the uh, number of games you know they, they, they beat Wakefield as you said the one point against Huddersfield uh, the week before the the Challenge Cup now what 
part of that was was Huddersfield, Huddersfield's preparation to the cup. But to lose are a, are a tough side, and, and you know, obviously the, the travel uh, element as well, going going down there, uh, it won't be an easy game for Saints. And I think they they know that, and, and like Carl says, they'll be fully prepared this time. They'll know that they've got to be at their best to um, to, to put in a good performance. And then uh, Carl, how can I versus Salford? The week off probably came at exactly the right time for Hockey R because they were in a bit of free fall. It probably came at the worst possible time for Salford because they were really putting some results and some performances together. Do you think Hockey R will have just had a clear the air session almost and gone, look, we need to address this because up until Tony Smith announced he was leaving, it was going pretty well. It was, wasn't it? And 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 obviously when Tony Smith and d- did that announcement, added to the fact they got the manner they got beat as well in the in the Challenge Cup semi final. You know, there's been a bit of a hangover from that. They are busted OKR to be fair. They've got a lot of injuries, but they will get Mikey Lewis back this week, which will be a which will be a huge boost. You know, that kid was going great, wasn't he? You know, before his injury, um, I still think there's probably uh, too many too many blokes out. You know, they've got such strike with. Uh, uh, Lynette and uh, and people like that, Parcel still missing, you know. So a lot of their good things that happen for Old KR still sat on the sidelines. So, uh, but for Salford, yeah, you know that they've been going really well. And it, although they picked up that uh, that win against Castleford before that, they went, uh, you know, a good win against Leeds, uh, Saints and Wigan pushed them all the way as well. So they're certainly a side that's heading in the right direction. So that'll be a great game to watch and, uh, and very difficult to predict as well. I think. Yeah, good. The whole KR, we've had, you know, we since Tony Swift came in, we've talked about them being the great entertainers of Super League. But Salford this season, Scully, throw the ball around, they play the game in the right way. They're a really fun team to watch. They are a pleasure to watch. I was at the I was at the last game at the, against Saints and thoroughly enjoyed it. And they said they, they push Saints all the way. Um, outstanding team, and you know the, the role role is doing a, a great job there. And then Wakefield Hull FC, Carl. We spoke about Toulouse starting to put the pressure on. Wakefield need to start picking up results and quickly, don't they, to just try and increase that gap again? Yeah, they certainly do. There just seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of unrest at Wakefield at the minute. You know, you're hearing players like Mason Leno being linked with Wigan and Jacob Miller being linked with Castleford, and you know, you, you're at the bottom of the table and you're hearing that two of your best players are on about. You know, they've got a sort of exit plan out out, out of that sort of relegation fight for next year, and you know, it's that time of year where people will have been told that they're, that they're being kept on or they're able to move on, uh, and and you sat two points away from an improving to lose. It's uh, it, it's it's a bit of a worry, I think, for, for for anyone at Wakefield at the moment. But having said that, you know Hull FC at home is a great chance for them to you know to turn Hull FC over there. I, I don't think they'll be able to mind. I think Hull, Hull FC will be too big and too strong for them. But uh, you know Wakefield and Bellevue is one of them funny places to go <laughs> in it, Scully, where you know anything can happen. It, Hull FC, such a strange. Mm team aren't they Scott? The key for me seems to be two things, Luke Gale on the pitch running the show playing for him, Jake Connor given the freedom to play his game and get his head up. Yeah but I think the, the biggest plus that, that Hull have got is, is, the, is their pack and some of their big men. I think Sate has been, has been outstanding, uh, Ligisau all, all year and for those boys to, to be able to play has got to be on the back of that, and and those boys have done it pretty consistently, as you say. You know, Gale has been been in and out. Um, hopefully now, you know, he's he, he's he's in to stay. And Jake Connor, you know, <laughs> speak about him all time. He's, he's he's one of the most talented, if not the most talented, players in 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 the competition. But he's got to do it for 80 minutes. He can't just come in and do something shiny and then go missing for for 10, 15 minutes. You know, he's he's got to be. There's other, there's other parts than the than than the flash stuff. You know that a fullback or a key player in a, in a team has got to do, and and some of it is the effort-based stuff. What he doesn't do enough of, but he's, he's an unbelievably talented player. But he just needs to be a bit more consistent for me. And the other thing worth bearing in mind in the next couple of weeks as well is we've got an international break on the way. And we'll play the All Stars, Scully. And whilst I'm sure Sean Wayne has a pretty concrete idea of who he thinks will be involved. Players must be aware that they're running out of time to impress him and put their hands up for international Yeah, 100%. Shares. And if there's, there's no incentive for, for a player to, to play in a mid-season international with, with a, you know, the, an opportunity to play yourself into a, to a home World Cup, then, you know, God help you. And, and you know, these players have, have, have got that opportunity. Um, but what Wayne looks at is, is those attitude things, is those effort-based things. You know, it's not always the, the, the big play or... It's the stuff that you do over 80 minutes and, and what you do over 80 minutes, week in, week out. Well, we're running out of time, gents, so let's have a look quickly at the contenders. And there are some really good contenders 
I think I've got an idea of what might win it for try of the week. Hello and welcome to Try of the Week. I'm Ross Fides and here are this week's contenders. Try number one, it's the 1895 Cup final. Lee on the attack against Featherson. Lovely footwork from Ipape, who's through the middle. And what a try! Look at what this means to the player of the match at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Try number two, and we stick with the 1895 Cup final. The closing 10 minutes of the game. Featherston looking to come back here. Jax collects well. Offload to Wildy, to Bussy. Another offload to Moores. And it's over the top to Craig Hall on the wing, who touches down for his second try of the day. To League One for try number three, it's Friday Night Lights at London Scholars. The home side looking for their first win of the season. It's out to Jerome Yates on the edge. He's looking to offload, but fends off the defence. He's got support either side now, and look at the speed on this guy. Connor Carr goes in for the tackle, but Yates crashes over for Scholars. Back to Tottenham for try number four. It's the Challenge Cup final now. Wigan trailing just after half time. They've got space on the wing here. And Bevan French charges down the line with Jay Field in support. And it's Super League's top try scorer now with another sensational try for Wigan. Try number five, we stick with the Challenge Cup final. Huddersfield with the ball. It's Kudjo looking to offload to McGilvery. And look at this. There's three defenders, but Mr. Huddersfield crashes over in the corner to push the Giants back into the lead. And finally, try number six. It's the closing five minutes of the Challenge Cup final. Bateman to Field, who looks to find space, but passes to Lulawai, who swings it out to Harry Smith. Harry Smith now, who puts in the grubber kick. Liam Marshall has space out on the edge there, and it's a lovely bounce for him. Marshall collects, and look at this. He dives over in the corner, and Wigan Warriors win the Challenge Cup final. Six tries, but only one winner. Head to the R League app now to vote for your favourite. Yeah, only one winner of try of the week, but I think whatever the result is, that Liam Marshall won't be try of the season for Wigan Warriors fans. Uh, gents, thank you for joining us. Uh, it, it feels good, doesn't it, that we, we've kind of, that Challenge Cup final delivered everything that we thought it might go. Yeah, for sure, you know, but like I say, for, for the rest of us, that's over and out of the way now, and it's literally now time to strap yourselves in and get ready for the next four months. And, and like Scully mentioned, for those players who are, who are looking at a World Cup as well, what better way to go into it than, you know, have a terrific season for yourself and your club and, and then straight on to that game. So, uh, brilliant. Loads to look forward to. Well, thanks for your time, gents, and thank you for joining us on The Last Tackle. Don't forget, this Sunday, line exclusive on The Sportsman, 12 o'clock kickoff, York City Knights against Elise Rhinos in the Betfred Women's Super League. Hit that subscribe button, make sure you don't miss a thing, and we'll be back next week with more from The Last Tackle.